my mother, my grandmother growing up, you know, my father was even in the kitchen as well. So that was pretty much the foundation of my cooking. Um, and from there, it was a combination of, you know, going to culinary school and then working for chefs like Daniel Balud, working for Scott Conant, uh, working for Norman Van Aken. And those are the people that really had such an integral role in my, in my cooking, um, opening my eyes to different cuisines, different techniques, which I apply to my, my cooking right now. Well, it's one of those things, you look at somebody like Daniel Balud, who is a technician. He is very precise um, and his cooking is very focused on the French technique. So that's one of the things that I, I really wanted to work on as a chef. And also you look at someone like Scott Conan that has that very Italian mamma mia kind of cooking that, you know, three or four ingredients, but, you know, a nicely cooked sauce with a pasta, like very simple comfort food. So it's one of those things that I... I picked and you know choose different things that I cook today like the curry goat that's my comfort food but using potato gnocchi is one of those things I learned from Scott Conant. You know it's, it's people that you look up to people that you people like Emma Lagasse I, I grew up watching him on television he's a mentor because it's you know especially being in your ends again and seeing him come to the restaurant and cooking for him it's like those moments are really magical for me and people that you look up to whether you worked for them directly or you read their book or you met them or you, you went to the restaurant you get inspired by those people so those are people definitely look up to you know it's kind of a, a nurturing hold your hand kind of way of guiding people through the kitchen you know i have a very high standard when it comes to cooking so when you come there people say it's kind of like a boot camp but when they when they leave they're like you know what i really learned a lot um, and it's basically find out that happy medium of what skill level does a cook have? How much do they know? What do they take away from me? Because I always tell people, you know, when you leave my restaurant, I want to say that I learned something. And that's the whole point of being a, a mentor is that they learn something or they look at things differently or they appreciate, you know, cooking this way or, or these flavors or this kind of spice. Um, but also being disciplined is one of those things as well. It's about life here. Um, and everything is intertwined with cooking as well. So for a chef, that's an easy, an easy move to make. I think that there's so much um, culture here and I think people are very passionate about cooking. You know, before we moved here, I was a little bit nervous of opening my restaurant here because I'm like, how are people going to receive me? You know, I'm the outsider coming in. Um, and you have, you know, heavyweights like Emeril, John Besh, Donald Link that have their concrete foundation they have their following so who am I to come in and shake stuff up um, but you know before we even opened people wrote me letters they gave me cards they sent me flowers they gave me jam you know saying welcome to the city so I, I think for me that was just something special saying that you know welcome to the city which is very special to me I mean before we even open I'm like why am I doing this what do I really want to go through this and it really is your life it's a commitment, and I think a lot of people don't understand what it takes to open a restaurant. It is details like the napkins, the cups, that's your fingerprint of your restaurant. Um, but also, it's not just about cooking, it's about the service, it's about creating a culture um, in your restaurant. And that's a big thing for me that I learned. I think I grew as a person, I think I grew as not taking things too seriously sometimes. I don't get as mad as I used to, you know, I let, I let things go. I mean, it's just, you have this role with things, you know, it, it's, if somebody doesn't show up for work, we just have to stick it out, yeah. you know, it's, it's just part of life. So there's a lot of things where I'm just like, okay guys, this is what's going on and let's just power through. And I, it's, it's great having a staff that believe in you and help you achieve that goal. Because a lot of people think it's just me that's doing everything and I have a whole team behind me that help me push through. I mean, there's so many restaurants in the city and they keep on opening and keep on opening. So you're never the new guy, you know, I'm not new anymore. This is going to be my second year. So I'm not the new kid on the block where like, oh, check out Nina's new restaurant. I'm not new. So I always tell my staff, I'm like, people can go to any restaurant. They don't have to come back. But we make a special effort to make sure people feel welcome. The food is comforting. It's approachable and they want to come back. I think that's the key to being consistent and having that foundation of that community of people recognizing you as a neighborhood restaurant. Um, How has it evolved? I think that we have a following now, a very loyal community of people that 
people still stop in the street to say thank you for opening a restaurant. And I'm like, this is crazy, you know? Um, but people are, are very understanding and they understand my food and they, um, they appreciate it. So I think for me, as we tend to like do different specials or change a menu, people are just like, they're excited. So I think we are able to push the envelope now a little bit more, um, not playing it safe, which is fun for us. I think I'm at a beautiful time where I'm comfortable with the way things are going. Um, will there be a second one down the line? Possibly. Um, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, you have team members that, that have been with you for a while that you want to help them grow. So whether it's, you know, getting a spot for my sous chef or something else, I, I definitely try and encourage that because it's, again, it's not just about me, it's about the team I have around me and helping them grow and get them to where they want to be. It's one of those things that it's special. You know, uh, being in Miami, I had numerous friends that got nominated for James Beard and I'm like, oh man, hopefully I, I, I get to, to, to join the club. You know, and it's one of those things that you get that you get that phone call saying like, hey, you got nominated. It's, it's like, it's numbing. A friend of mine texted me saying, you, you're a finalist. And I'm like, finalist for what? Like, what are you talking about? And, um, he, and, I, and he told me, he's like, it's for James Beard. And I'm like, and I'm like, no, I'm like, I need to look it up for my, I need to see it for myself online. And the list came out and it's like, also not just being nominated, but also being in that category with all these great chefs is very, very huge. And it's one of those things, when I saw the, nom the, the nominees, I said, I've made it this far. Like, even if I don't make it to the finals, like, that's it for me. I'm, I'm happy, you know, to be in that class with those chefs.